Okay, so if you recall in the last class we had discussed about E k diagram okay? and I told you that in, uh, in a real semiconductor crystal the electrons will face this periodic potential of the atoms that is why the E k diagram becomes distorted and this E k diagram has a huge impact on how we understand devices because the effective mass of electrons as it moves inside a crystal is dictated by the curvature of the E k diagram. So, it is very important hope you have you know recalled all those things. I told you in the last class while ending that I will introduce the concept of holes because that is as important as electrons. Okay? So, today we shall introduce the concept of holes and also the statistics that dictate how electrons and holes are populating this energy bands okay? and it is a very crucial concept you will see electrons and holes are equally important in semiconductor research. Okay? So, let us come back to the whiteboard here. I told you that the conduction band here I will call C B conduction band and then there is a valence band here V B. This is completely filled with electrons okay? this is completely filled with electrons okay? and because it is completely filled with electrons, electrons do not have any empty states to move. So, it cannot carry current, but this is nearly empty. So, you can actually excite an electron somewhere here somehow you excite either by giving heat or by light or something okay? you excite some electron there then this electron is actually free to move and that is how they carry current and you can tune how many electrons you can excite or how many electrons you can have here and that is the beauty of semiconductor I keep telling you uh, because in metals or in insulators is very difficult or you cannot do that. Okay? So, uh, now uh, we will keep them in mind that there is something called EK diagram we will not forget that okay? because that is very important. Now, when I take an electron from the valence band to the conduction band it leaves behind a vacancy here. No? If I take one electron away from here to there, it leaves behind a vacancy here. That vacancy, that vacancy is called a hole. Actually, a hole is an absence of electron, right? Hole is an absence of electron. You agree, right? An electron just moved there, it left behind an empty space. It is a sort of a uh, sort of a vacancy. So, that vacancy is called hole and hole is the absence of electron. But in semiconductor devices it is much more convenient and it's, it makes sense if you define the hole sort of a particle only. Although it is the absence of electron, okay, although it is the absence of electron you can treat it as a particle and what will happen now? Suppose this is the valence band, this is your valence band, it is filled with electrons, right? I will give electrons like this, okay, it is filled with electrons. I also is filled throughout, but I will only take. So, one of this for example, this has gone to conduction band, okay? it has gone to conduction band, it has gone to conduction band, that is okay, it has come here, okay? that is fine. Now, there is a vacancy here, there is a vacancy here. So, if you apply a field electric field in this direction, if you apply electric field in this direction, which means electrons will try to move in this direction. right? If a field is in this direction, electrons will try to move in this direction. What will happen now? See, if this, if this was filled, no, if this was filled initially, then the electrons cannot move because there is no empty state. Where will they move? They cannot move, so there is no current. But now I told you that one electron has gone from here, and it has left behind an empty space. It's like a vacancy. It's a hole. What will happen now? If I apply a field in this direction, x direction, electrons will move in negative x direction. So this electron will be able to come here now right? and then here it will be a empty space okay? because electron has the nearby electron has come here it is an empty space. Now, this electron can come here of course, so because it is an empty space no, it is a vacancy. So, it will come here and this will be blank of course, the other one can come and so on and so forth. So, essentially what will happen is that you will have electrons like that and the hole empty it will keep moving. The hole was initially here, the hole was initially there, right? but the hole is moving in this direction. The hole is actually moving in this direction. In a way the vacancy is moving in this direction because the electrons are jumping jumping right. So, uh, co coming here right. So, the hole is moving in this direction. So, I can say that hole is moving in the direction which is in the same direction as electric field which means it has a positive charge you agree electrons are moving to the left electrons are moving to the left because they will move opposite to the field but because they are moving to the left the hole is seems like moving to the right 
agree because the hole is moving to the right it looks like the hole is moving to the right initially the hole is here so the hole has a positive charge because only then it is moving in the direction of the field okay so hole essentially is an absence of electron which can be modeled as a particle with a positive charge that moves in the same direction as the electric field okay that moves in the same direction of electric field and initially the if everything was packed here no hole you know then all the electrons are there they cannot be movement the total momentum is zero but now the total momentum is not zero because there is an empty particle sort of a you know it's absence it's moving so now this is actually not a mo total momentum is zero so that negative of the total momentum you know that is the whole momentum you can call the whole actually is a is the negative you know is, is the opposite of electron but its mass is not the same by the way its mass is not the same uh, because this whole can now be modeled as also a particle it's called a quasi particle because it's not realistically a particle but you can model it as a particle and that makes life easier instead of explaining and understanding how electrons are moving here in this this way it is much easier to talk about a vacancy moving to the right a hole moving to the right that makes it simpler of course in conduction when you talk about electron moving because there is all empty you know you talk about electron but here you talk about holes so the beautiful thing is that holes uh, also have their own energy band first of all they have their own energy band and their energy band will correspond to the valence band right because they are moving in the valence band electrons are moving in the conduction band holes are moving in the valence band so holes will correspond to valence band hmm? holes also have their own effective masses because you can draw the ek diagram for holes also and that will be for valence band right so for example this is e this is k and i told you the electrons have a ek diagram like that the same way the holes also can be drawn this is conduction band by the way the hole because the hole energy is opposite of electron you know the hole will look like this this is the hole okay this is the hole ek diagram energy this is the whole energy and this is k equal to 0 and electron energy you know this is e k diagram for electron as you go up the electron energy increases right here as you go down whole energy increases okay as you keep going down the whole energy increases so at this point at k equal to 0 point the whole energy is the lowest okay as you go down it increases so this is the this this actually is the valence band okay and their holes are here you can say holes are here okay and this is the conduction band so essentially we are talking about ek diagram for both electrons and holes okay we are talking about electron ek diagram of both electrons and holes so essentially you have this e k k of course this is the whole energy here so this is electron this is hole okay this gap sorry okay this gap is the energy band gap again okay because this energy band gap it's called eg as i told you this energy band gap is the same as this conduction band empty conduction band and a fully filled valence band this is fully filled some electrons will go here leaving behind holes here and that's electrons will be here right so this valence band corresponds to this this conduction band corresponds to this this band gap of eg corresponds to this energy and of energy this is called this whole thing this whole thing okay this whole thing is called sorry this whole thing is called band structure because it is ek diagram okay this is called band structure ek diagram and this is called band diagram just the band diagram because it's in real space okay but this is the one to one correspondence between the same so valence band essentially you talk about hole transport in valence band it's filled with electrons by the way but holes are moving in the valence band and electrons are moving in the conduction band right that's what is happening okay holes are moving in valence band electrons are moving in conduction band holes are essentially quasi particles their absence of electrons uh, you that you model as quasi particles they have their own effective mass because this ek diagram that you are drawing for hole same thing that comes for electrons okay it also has a curvature no it also has a curvature so that will also give the effective mass of hole 
the inverse of this curvature h square h bar square by the inverse of this curvature will also give you the effective mass of hole and so holes have their own effective mass electrons have their own effective mass uh, and, the, and, the, and this point okay this point is called the lowest energy point of the conduction band okay and this is the topmost point of the valence band the distance between this energy gap between them is the energy band gap eg okay energy band gap eg this is k remember this is k so this is k equal to 0 this is k equal to 0 there are many important things here uh, number one thing is that unlike in electron holes are more complicated because they are not te technically particle particle right because they are quasi particle they are model the vacancies are model so there is a there is a little thing here a hole might not only have this one branch this is one band it might actually have two three sort of it might have two three sort of a we can call them branches of E k diagram electrons that technically do not have them but they may but typically holes will definitely have this you know mostly have this separate branches okay you might see that the curvature of the topmost is the lowest the curvature of the topmost is the lowest then curvature increases if the curvature becomes higher then effective mass becomes lower so this is called light hole branch the top one is called heavy hole branch why is it called heavy hole because the curvature is small okay let me draw it again maybe freshly right i'm only talking about the e k diagram for holes so this is e sorry this is k this is there are three branches typically one is this one is the red one and then one is the blue one for example okay this red one actually goes to almost k equal to 0 like this and touches and comes back here but the blue one has an offset here there is an offset here okay the blue and the red has an offset okay so the black one has the lowest curvature you see so it has got the highest effective mass so it is called the heavy hole branch okay the middle one has a higher curvature so lower effective mass it is called light hole branch so there are different branches of hole actually and the last one is actually s o spin orbit coupling we do not have to worry about it it is basically some coupling between spin of the holes and other things uh, so it has three branches but that is fine we can talk about the top branch here uh, and this is how holes actually the energy split looks like uh, and of course the electron will have only one branch typically so electron is fine there and this gives the energy gap that is what we need to know and this is k right this is k uh, you know it is almost like talking about a water bubble you know a, a air bubble in a water so you have water field and gravity is pulling you this side right gravity is pulling you this side right but there is a bubble of air the bubble will move upward against gravity the bubble will move upward against gravity right so how do you explain that it is easier to explain if you say that the bubble has a negative mass so that it is acting against gravity is moving up so in a filled water you are talking about an empty bubble same thing you can talk about a hole a very crude analogy you can talk about a hole in a valence band that is moving against uh, uh, you know the it is actually moving in the direction of the field against uh, in the opposite of the direction of the electrons that is how you can talk about it okay so that is one thing and because I am in the EK diagram I am talking about the holes and electrons already I told you that electrons and holes have their own effective masses uh, they have their own EK diagram and the separation between them is the energy band gap there is a one to one correspondence between the E k diagram and the energy diagram here. Uh, what is more important here to understand is that uh, when I have an E k diagram like this right uh, and the energy the lowest point is at k equal to 0 it is not necessary that um, it is not necessary that x again I will just um, put it here put here k this is E this is k I told you that you know the hole has an energy like that typically we will talk about that k equal to 0 point at this k equal to 0 point the hole will have this this you know the 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 topmost point of the ek diagram in hole will correspond to here the bottommost point of the ek diagram in the electron will correspond to here but it is not necessary that all semiconductors will follow this rule in some semiconductors in some semiconductors uh, you know that in some semiconductors your the bottommost point of conduction band need not be at k equal to 0 this is a k equal to 0 point right it need not be k equal to 0 like this in this case it is fine this point the bottommost point of conduction band the topmost point of valence band they are at the same k point the energy difference is band gap but it need not be same that is what I am saying what, what do I mean 
I mean that there can be semiconductors where you have E, you have K, K, E. We will always take the whole uh, for whole the valence band will always have the topmost point at k equal to 0. Okay. But for electrons you know the conduction band may have a point here, but this is not here exactly and then there is somewhere here comes very low and goes at some other k okay, at some other k. So, you see this is the lowest point this point this point is lower than this point agree this point is at a much higher point no right this point is at lower point than this but this is k equal to 0 and this is k not equal to 0 this is some finite k we do not know what k is this right. But energy band gap E g energy band gap is defined between the highest point in the valence band here and the lowest point in the conduction band which means this and this this is the gap you are talking about and this is your energy band gap okay this is your energy band gap you cannot call this as the energy band gap because this is much larger gap than this no this gap is much larger than this we have to take the smallest gap the topmost point in the valence band and the bottommost point in the conduction band their separation in energy is the energy band gap not this one and this one what what happens here is that the bottommost point of the conduction band is at not k equal to 0 because it is not k equal to 0 so an electron and a hole if they have to do a transition or recombine they have to go this way you no know? it's very difficult or not probable why because this change is a change in k and k is momentum so essentially for an electron and a hole to basically make a transition some way if to excite or you know absorb light or emit light or so on um, electron and a hole has to essentially make this transition across this gap uh, this is a momentum change you know delta k and this change of momentum is pretty huge you cannot electrons and holes do not have that kind of a you know a light particle for example a photon cannot give that kind of a change of momentum to cross from here to there. So, transition of electron and hole uh, this way is uh, you know it is a it is it is it is a process which needs the assistance of some other things like atomic vibrations because atoms when they vibrate they can give energy and change the momentum that is how they come go from here to there this is a very inefficient process. So, this kind of semiconductor where the bottom of the conduction band and the top of the valence band are not exactly at the same k these are called indirect band gap semiconductors indirect band gap semiconductor like silicon for example or germanium for example okay. uh, and those materials where the top of the valence band like I showed you in the previous slide here where the top of the uh, the top the, the bottom of the conduction band and the top of the valence band are in the same k. So, if you want to excite an electron from here to there you do not have to change k no change in k which means no change in momentum right no change in momentum. So, essentially if you want to excite an electron from here to there or get an electron hole we combine here the k is only 0 here right. So, electrons and holes essentially do not have to change their momentum it is a very efficient process these are called direct band gap semiconductors and examples are like gallium arsenide right gallium nitride and so on ok these are direct band gap semiconductor uh, and the semiconductors where E k diagrams are such that the bottom of the conduction band the top of the valence band are not in the same k they are called indirect band gap semiconductor like silicon. So, transitioning from one point to another point becomes very difficult or inefficient you need to take the help of phonons or which are phonons are actually uh, you do not have to use the word phonons so much these are actually atoms vibrations ok. Atoms keep vibrating no about the mean position you can quantify them or you can call them as phonons ok and those atomic vibrations essentially give energy to the electrons or holes to change their momentum and it is an inefficient process. So, things like indirect band gap semiconductor like silicon or germanium they cannot emit light they cannot they cannot emit light why because for emitting light you will see that electrons that are here have to come down and recombine with holes that are here and the energy that is there actually is released as photon we will see that in the light optical processes electrons that are here and the holes that are here they will recombine 
directly and the energy that is lost this energy you know that is emitted as photon okay that is emitted as photon and that an an energy that is emitted will be roughly equal to the band gap of course whatever the band gap is there that is how you emit the light because they will recombine it needs no change of momentum so it is an efficient process that is how materials like gallium arsenide or gallium nitride can be used to make LED because they can emit light but material like silicon for example you cannot emit light because an electron that is here and a hole that is here for them to recombine you need the help of atomic vibration to change the momentum so that energy lost actually is energy that is given to the atomic vibration okay uh, and hence uh, you cannot emit light it is a very inefficient process. Uh, similarly absorption of light in materials like uh, gallium nitride, gallium arsenide is very high okay the absorption is very high here uh, you know a, a photon comes here for example uh, an electron in the conduction valence band can be excited to the conduction band and that energy is used up the photon energy is used up it is a very efficient process so these also have very high absorption coefficient. Uh, now silicon indirect manga material like silicon or germanium uh, also can absorb light uh, although the absorption coefficient is much lower but it can still be absorbed light that is why they are used to also make silicon solar cell for example when the light comes that light energy the photon energy will be used to excite the electrons from here to there it is not a very efficient process because part of that energy has to also be given up to the uh, you know the photons will not have enough change energy to change the momentum so you have to take help from the atomic vibration anyways right so you can excite the electrons of course with taking the help of atomic vibration it is an inefficient process so the absorption is not uh, very the absorption coefficient is not very high unlike in direct band gap material like gallium nitride or gallium arsenide where the ek diagram is such that the conduction band valence band and the same k so the absorption is very efficient there right but this material like silicon cannot emit light uh, that is one thing and these are called indirect band gap material and this is a very important concept that we should know but both indirect and direct band gap material uh, their energy diagram in the real space will look like this only you know you have a conduction band here you have a valence band here whether it is a direct or indirect you do not know here because it is a it is a it is a x axis it is it is a x axis in centimeter and this is energy this is called energy band diagram and from the energy band diagram conduction band valence band you actually cannot tell if it is a direct or indirect band gap semiconductor but from this diagram you can tell if it is a direct or indirect band gap semiconductor from ek diagram and that ek diagram actually tells you that is why it is very important whether a material can emit light or not can be told very easily very nicely but from the ek diagram okay so uh, that is the concept about indirect and direct band gap material okay so now what are the things you have learned let us take a recap and we go uh, as we go to the next concept so one thing that we have learned is uh, so let us see from where we had started this lecture uh, I told you the concept of holes we have introduced the okay so we have introduced the concept of hole right so I told you that electrons can go from the conduction uh, valence band to conduction band they can leave behind a hole a vacancy and you see if there is a vacancy here then when you apply an electric field electrons move in the opposite direction to the electric field and it seems like the holes are moving to the right because electrons keep moving to the left. So we can treat the hole as a quasi particle with a positive charge that moves in the direction of the electric field hole also has a uh, its own ek diagram I told you holes also have the own ek diagram and the ek diagram of holes actually represents the the, the valence band of the semiconductor uh, valence band of semiconductor and the and the movement of holes is uh, always associated with the movement of holes in the valence band movement of electrons is associated with movement of electrons in the conduction band and the curvature of this also will give you the effective mass of holes so holes of there also have their own effective mass I told you that holes might actually have three different uh, branches of ek diagram a light hole heavy hole and a spin orbit and a separate bandage here a band hole here but we typically consider only a light hole uh, sometimes maybe li uh, sorry heavy hole and sometimes maybe light hole uh, and they have different curvature they have this band this separation between the highest point of the valence band and the lowest point of the conduction band it is basically defined as the band gap if they happen to be at the same k and k equal to 0 it is called the, the, the direct band gap semiconductor and if they do not happen to be in the same position k then they are called indirect band gap semiconductor like silicon for example. Uh, that is an indirect band gap semiconductor so it is a very uh, poor you know it, it cannot emit light it also is it is not a very good absorber of light although you can still make solar cells by making thick silicon layers uh, and to make a transition of electron hole if in this kind of material you need the help of atomic vibrations called also phonons that is how you basically make uh, the transition between electron and hole it is an inefficient process and that is why it cannot emit light. Now, next immediate concept that we will learn here uh, in today's class that is very important is actually how 
this is we have learned right how uh, electrons and holes are occupying the energy you know this is the the conduction band for example and this is the variance band for example i'm talking about the direct band gap semiconductor here this is ek diagram right this is ek diagram how are electrons populating the conduction band how are holes populating the valence band all these concepts uh, we need to understand uh, by using statistics why because electrons and holes are very large in number you cannot individually pick up an electron and hole to do that you have to talk about an ensemble like a collection and that's why statistics comes handy and we have to use a fermi dirac statistics here a fermi dirac statistics uh, the fermi dirac statistics are nothing very fancy i mean there's two people dirac and then fermi of course they both got nobel prizes when they're very young um, this fermi dirac statistics will tell you how electrons or holes will basically uh, you know populate the, the energy bands and when we study from direct statistics we do not have to think of only electrons it can be applied to any particle which has certain properties you know like indistinguishability and other things. So, when we study from direct statistics it is not exclusively with respect to semiconductor but it is with respect to uh, many type of particles you know it can be applied to many kind of particles which satisfy this we call them fermions we do not have to worry about that so much now. But how do we actually come up with this from direct statistics? to define the statistics of electrons and holes that are occupying this you know for that we will take a very simple case into account. Um, let me uh, do one thing. So, suppose I have many energy states these are all at an energy level E 1 ok. So, these are all at an energy level E 1 and there are G 1 states ok. There are G 1 states they are all at energy E 1 and the number of electrons that will occupy this is n 1 ok. n 1 electrons will suppose occupy g 1 energy states that are at an energy e 1 ok. Then similarly, there are g 2 energy states at energy e 2 and n 2 electrons have to occupy them. So, similarly there are many right. This is suppose g i energy states at energy E i and N i has to be there and eventually you have a large number of thing eventually there is N n you know N n for example total number here ok. So, first let us look about this in how many ways can you in how many ways I repeat in how many ways can you fill this G 1 states by N 1 electrons. It is like saying I have ok I have for example, uh, 7 boxes I have 7 boxes and 5 say marbles I need to fill up 7 boxes with 5 marbles in how many ways can I do that I can do that by 7 C 5 which is 7 factorial by 5 factorial 2 factorial if you remember from high school physics uh, high school sorry maths right. So, the number of ways in which you can fill up G 1 energy states with N 1 electrons is actually G 1 factorial by N 1 factorial G 1 minus N 1 factorial ok. That is the number of ways in which you can fill up the these states. Now, of course, for the second level you can do G 2 N 2 and so on for ith level it will be G i by N i G i minus N i right it will be like that. So, the total number of ways in which you can fill up all these things will not be the sum, but it will be the product. It will be the product of G 1 factorial by G 1 minus N 1 factorial N 1 factorial that is the number of ways in about the first energy level can be filled up. The second energy level can be filled up by G 2 factorial G 2 minus N 2 factorial N 2 factorial and so on if you product this pro like the summation is given by sigma the product is given by pi ok the product is given by pi. So, if I give sigma it is summation right if you remember. So, instead of summation you have to use product product is given by big pi like that. So, this is basically i for example and i goes from 1 to a large number of n ok. So, the way is to minimize this ok and so there are certain uh, derivatives and some approximations that have to be used 
call Stirling approximation because it's a factorial, and then you have to minimize this, uh, you know, probability eventually. So what you get essentially is something like uh, you have to get something like say n i by uh, g i, the number of electrons that you are filling in the number of available states that you have, it basically gives you the probability, it basically gives you the probability that a state is occupied. It is like you have 5 marbles and 7 empty boxes. The probability that a box is occupied is 5 by 7, you agree? So, essentially you get this probability, this is the probability that an energy state this is the probability that an energy state is occupied by electron, is occupied by an electron, okay. it is occupied by an electron that is the probability. Okay. And this probability can be obtained by basically minimizing this function and doing some approximation and simple maths, we will skip that but eventually this expression, this n i by g i, it is actually called and this is at e i level by the way, so this is the probability that electron is occupying that and it is corresponding to i. So, it is called f, the probability is called f and this f of e i because this is the corresponding to an energy state of e i, okay, that these are the number of states, these are the number of electrons, but this is the energy by the way and this is actually given by 1 by, okay, 1 by 1 plus, this is 1, 1 plus exponential of e i minus e f, there is something called e f by k t this k is not the reciprocal space uh, momentum, this k is Boltzmann constant k okay. and t is temperature. So, let us write down it again, okay, let us write it down again, f of e i the probability that this energy state is occupied is 1 by 1 plus exponential of e i minus e f by k t this is Boltzmann constant k b t this is the probability that an energy state is occupied at E i right by an electron and E f here is called actually the Fermi level. You call it Fermi energy when it is temperature equal to T equal to 0 otherwise you call it Fermi level and it is some way it is also called chemical potential by many people same thing actually okay. is the Fermi level and what does this Fermi level mean? It is actually a statistical construct it does not exist in reality, but the difference of Fermi level can be actually a realistic quantity by the way that will be different. It is a statistical construct, it is a statistical construct or a statistical concept that helps in understanding many things. For example, if your E i the energy that you are talking about is E f, then if you look here what will happen? F of E i equal to E f, you put here E i equal to E f that will become 0. So, e to the power 0 is 1, 1 by 1 plus 1 is 1 by 2 and this is independent of temperature, does not matter what t you have, this is 50 percent. So, you can say the Fermi level is a statistical concept of course, it is the energy level, it is the energy level where you have a probability of 50 percent, the finding the electron, of finding the electron, right of finding the electron an electron okay the probability the energy level at which there is a 50% chance that there will be an electron that energy level is called fermi level and it is independent of temperature like this probability of 50% is independent of temperature at any temperature okay this is at any temperature at any temperature the probability of finding the electron is 50% at fermi level that is your statistical construct or a concept of Fermi level. Okay. It helps in understanding so many things okay. and the Fermi level as you will see will become the most important thing that will go along with you in the semiconductor device analysis. None of the device that we will talk about in this course can be understood without Fermi level, everything will be related to Fermi level. So, Fermi level is a statistical construct that tells you the probability of finding the electron it is the level at which the probability of finding the electron is exactly 50 percent, right. So, what I can do here is that I can plot 
the probability this f of e right versus e at say t equal to 0 kelvin. So, at t equal to 0 kelvin if you plot that function I just had drawn no it will look like this it will look like this ok. Uh, this is E f till the Fermi level all the electrons in a, it has a 100 percent probability this is 1 this is 0 above Fermi level there is 0 percent probability that electrons are there and below Fermi level there is 100 percent probability that electrons are there at 0 Kelvin. If I increase the temperature say you know if I increase the temperature say if I increase the temperature to say 100 Kelvin then this Fermi Dirac distribution this is Fermi function by the way that in case I had not told you this actually uh, this is a Fermi function it is it is a Fermi function ok and it is you can call this is the Fermi Dirac probability also ok it is also called Fermi Dirac probability the probability distribution of electrons in a way at any and you can find out the probability at any energy level E I told you that at E f at Fermi level it is 50 percent but at any energy level E i you can find out because you know E i minus E f that E that quantity you have to know right and temperature of course you have to know. So, uh, so what do I do? So, this is at 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 100 Kelvin this will become how much how, how do you know this will become slightly this and this will slightly become this this point of course is half this is 50 percent. So, at Fermi level you have always 50 percent probability of finding the electron, but now there is a slight probability of finding the electron above the Fermi level also right because you know the overall area has remained same, but this has become uh, slightly deviated and then you have a uh, say t equal to 200 Kelvin I am raising the temperature what will happen then then to you will have even more like this like this. So, now you have even more a probability that there is a electron above Fermi level to much far far away energy level you know this is also this has increased. So, you, you have a finite probability of finding the electron above Fermi level also what it means as temperature you know as your temperature increases as your temperature increases probability also increases that you probability also increases that you will uh, the of finding electron above Fermi level of finding electron above Fermi level. So, finding the electron above Fermi level also increases the probability of finding the electron above Fermi level also increases when your temperature increases that is what it means right. With higher temperature if you take uh, for example, T equal to 300 Kelvin then of course, it will be even like that even more, but this at any temperature at Fermi level this is E f at E f you will always have 50 percent probability of finding the electron that is what it means. So, basically uh, Fermi Dirac statistics will tell you the distribution of electrons and it also you know if I want to tell you again if f of E gives you the probability of finding the electron at energy level E then 1 minus f of actually E is the probability of not finding the electron. So, this is the probability of finding holes by the way and this is the probability of finding electrons by the way right. So, the electrons and holes and how they are distributed and how we study them the devices and everything depends on the probability distribution ok. Uh, this probability it is very important that is why we introduce the concept of Fermi function. Now, the another important concept that we probably will introduce uh, in the next class of course uh, and that will be very important to understand many of the things I will just briefly mention what that is here uh, and that is called actually density of states. I will not introduce it in this class in the next class we will come here ok. Density of states this is something we will discuss in the next class ok uh, and together with Fermi function I told you the Fermi function and the Fermi probability here right. So, with Fermi function and density of states that I will introduce in the next class with doing combining these two concept you can find out the actual number of electrons or holes ok actual number of electrons or holes can be found out by doing these two things. So, already I told you Fermi function is a probability function and density of states is something that we will take up in the next class. Density of states essentially tells you how many energy states are available per unit energy per unit volume per unit energy per unit volume how many empty states are there or how many energy states are there. Once you know that density of states 
and once you know the probability that you can occupy those empty states, the product of these two in a way will give you the actual number of electrons or holes that are there in the semiconductor. So, all the devices will depend on how many electrons and how many holes you have in the device and for that you need density of states and then you need the probability. So, today we learnt about probability, the probability that an energy is occupied by uh, an electron that comes from Fermi Dirac probability and Fermi Dirac probability says that at exactly Fermi level which is a statistical concept you have 50 percent probability of finding the electron. But as you increase the temperature there is also a probability that above the Fermi level you will find some electron. At 0 Kelvin you have absolutely no chance that you will find electron above the Fermi level. Okay. So, next class we will introduce the concept of density of states from there we will take it forward. Okay. So, thank you uh, and we will meet again in the next class with uh, density of states. Okay. Thank you.